Hello everyone, welcome back. So today we go into chapter five. Now perhaps you're thinking, wait, where's chapter four? That's a good question. I skipped chapter four because you only learned one thing, and it's this equation right here. Delta equals Li. That's it. That's all chapter four in a single equation. Boom, you're done, you did it, it's amazing. Now, where does this come from? Well, remember we have our stress is equal to strain times the elasticity. Well, let's put our equations in for stress and for strain. So force over area is equal to modulus elasticity times delta over L. If I rearrange, then I get Fli. And I'm done. That's the derivation, that's where you get the equation. We're gonna use it quite a bit in this chapter, so you'll get practice with it. So if you wonder where chapter four went, that's where chapter four went. I just, I don't see a point. Okie doke. So with that in mind, fairly braced, let's jump into this chapter. So what I want you to understand is the relationship between loads and elongation for different members. And what we're going to do is we're going to do some applications and we're going to jump into the introduction of this chapter five and we'll hit on St. Bennett's principle, which is very, very important. So first off, older columns, they're not uniform along their entire length, which means that all of our equations don't work. You know, stress is equal to force over area. Area is changing. So how can we figure out the total elongation of a system if the area, cross-sectional area is constantly changing? Well, we're going to get to that, but we won't get to that today. Today we're going to talk about why chapter 5 is important. Now, determining the force and deformations within all points of a body is extremely difficult. We have a crazy loading or a crazy geometry. Now, luckily, we're going to only use idealized models to simplify our calculations. So things will be simpler in here, but in real life, you're probably going to have to use some sort of um, numerical software to sign, solve for it. Um, but even if you are in real life, using idealized models can get you a good estimate of what it's going to be, and it's still fairly accurate. Okay, we have one more little detail to get to before we really jump into how we would solve those crazy systems. And that's St. Bennett's principle, because we haven't talked about this before, but you know, every time we've looked at the stress, it's always been really far away from the force. It's never like right at the surface. And you might be thinking to yourself like, okay, you know, I'm pushing on a single point. Why does the entire surface move down? And that's because of St. Ben's principle. What it says is that if we're, as long as we're several radius or several bar widths away from the point of application, then we can say that the stress distribution is uniform and only in the area directly adjacent to a load do we see a different profile. So as long as we don't care about those particular points, we're good. So in our general like rule of thumb, if the column has a diameter D, then if you go a depth equal to the diameter, it tends to normalize. Now, why does this happen? Where does it go? You see it's happening here. These are not you know, necessarily like experimentally measured, but it's a good idea of what's going to happen here. See, what's happening here is this is a stress concentration. So we apply the load and it, there's a lot of stress that's applied in a single particular point. Um, other things can concentrate stress, but the point load does it. Now, all these interconnected atomic bonds that are inside of your material are what begin to cause that to be spread out evenly over the entire thing. Um, just think about it like a kind of a trampoline here. If you push down to one part of a trampoline, well, the entire trampoline moves. And the reason for that is it's got all these bonds that are connected. And so just like a bunch of, you know, rubber bands that are connected together, or a bunch of springs that are connected together, you can't push down on one point without pushing down on all of them eventually. All those interconnected bonds are going to bend, begin to be pushed. So let me try a better drawing here. I've been drawing circles for a while now. Um, so if I push down on this circle and they're all connected, 
Or maybe initially, you know, these two won't feel it, but after a couple, you know, after an instant, well, they're going to start feeling the extra force from that, as will any bonds atoms that they're connected to, and onward and onward down the line. And so to reduce that force that each of them is feeling, to lower the energy of the system, they're going to spread out that load. Now spread it out and make it easier on them all individually. Now, here is a scary thing. Well, you can see by looking at this, we talk about a stress concentration. Concentration is a very scary word when it comes to mechanics and materials. Um, Solid mechanics does not like stress concentrations. The reason for that is that this is several magnitudes greater than this, which means that your part can fail because it's applied or load is applied at a point rather than be distributed over a surface. You need to realize that when you're calculating things. Also, things like having a hole in your part will um, lead to stress concentration, which is also not good. So be very careful about this. Be considering it when you're building something. Is my part, you know, strong enough to take that point load? Can I distribute that load so it doesn't, isn't a point load anymore? Um, what can I do to get rid of this stress concentration? However, once you get far enough away, it's no longer an issue. So I think that's everything. Oh, no, we got a little bit more here. Um, and the case happens for any particular loading type. You have two point loads. They will eventually become equally um, uniform. So like I was saying beforehand, rivets and holes, those are also act as stress concentrations because suddenly you have a smaller area. Once you get a little far enough past them, you know, about a diameter's worth past them, it will normalize once again. But you can still have localized damage right there if you're not careful. Be careful about these stress points because they're what will typically cause failure. Like cracks. Cracks are what do this because they change the area effectively. They're putting the area into this small section instead of being the full width. That's why cracks lead to failure. So we have to think about these things when we're building our parts. Now in our problems, I'm not going to be like trying to trick you and saying, oh, you worked enough diameters away. Um, but this is still something you need to realize for real life, not necessarily when we're in these idealized problems for this class. So this is St. Ben's Principle. And next time we're going to talk about how we can use an understanding of this and understanding of our Flea equation, which I just showed you at the very beginning, um, to calculate the elongation of a non-uniform system of bars. Thanks for listening. See you soon. Bye.